right guys, uh, getting ready to patch up the dash now and fix this crack. I uh, just got through removing all of the foam that was stuck up inside of this airbag cavity and I just removed it all, so it's all gone and it's no longer pushing up on top. So now I have this dash piece that's pretty loose now, so I have to kind of affix it back to the dash the way it was and then weld this crack back together, whatever you want to call it. I keep saying weld because I'm so used to welding all the time, but um, it's kind of the same process. I'm basically going to cut a V groove inside of this crack and then heat it up with a heat gun and then fill it in with uh, with really hot clay almost and, and get it kind of molten a little bit and get it to really bond these pieces together. So it's already starting to go back to its shape after removing that foam. So that's good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do that, mount it on the tripod and we will check it out. All right, guys. Uh, okay, so what I need to do first and I hope you can hear me over that air conditioner in the background, it's really loud. But what I need to do first is uh, cut out this, this crack, get all these pieces out, and kind of make like a, like a V groove. That's kind of like what I was saying earlier when I, when I said welding, sometimes I say I'm welding the pieces together, and it's, it's kind of the same principle to me, I guess. Um, you know, when you have two pieces of steel and you need to butt two pieces together, uh, you have to cut a V groove in between them. So basically you shave one side down at an angle and then the other side you put it together and you have a V and then you put your welding bead in between there. Uh, that's essentially the same kind of thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a V shaped uh, groove and then I'll heat it up and then I'll lay down like some hot clay in between that groove to weld the two pieces together really nicely. So. I need to make sure I can kind of heat this up and get it to take shape so that it lays in good and it's kind of bowed um, in this area. So, but I don't want to do that until after I have it secured, I guess. Uh, all right, so anyway, let me, my big knife, I love this knife. All right, so I have a crack here. So what I'll need to do is come in Basically, cut away all of this out. All right. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm kind of out of the camera shot here, but um, you get this area. All right. I just cut myself. All right. So, do that, that, all right, so now I'm going to make a pretty big cut. smaller cut up here because it's kind of a delicate spot. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna come in up this way. So I have to be careful because I don't have the foam behind this piece now, so there's nothing really to support this. And it's kind of like when I was working on this piece over here, you can't see that, but uh, the, the, what am I trying to say, the cover that goes over the, the gauges, it's really thin, so I have to be real careful. Okay, so that's kind of the V groove I was telling you about. Piece of plastic or something. Okay. 
So I may have to stick my hand up underneath here and support it. So I got the tripod right in the way. All right, so I have a crack right there too. And one right there. Basically it. That. And then I'm gonna get some clay. And you'll probably say this won't take too long. Um, all right. So I'm gonna use these little guys a lot. Uh, these are. These are. Uh, what am I trying to say? Um, Okay, so these, I don't know what these are called. <laughs> no, I got these at Home Depot. They're basically for like uh, either mixing body filler or probably more for doing like uh, drywall compound um, and, and kind of spreading, just anything. It's just a spreader. But the thing about these is that they're very thin and it's a spring steel. So it always pops back into its shape and it's, it's very easy to make a contour with and that, that one's a lot thinner than this one that I use. This one's a thicker one it's also spring steel and it's been heat treated you can usually tell because it's blue or something but this one's really good for keeping a real straight line on where I'm working. So let me get some clay out of the oven. some clay it's still wet what I do is I heat everything up kind of the clay and this uh, groove all at the same time it changes my air conditioner sound when I turn this on so I want to heat this up and get it to where it starts turning glossy you may not be able to see that in a camera hopefully the focusing thing I have an issue with the focus on the camera Hopefully it stays focused. So this heat gun you want to keep pretty, you know, keep moving uh, a lot. You don't want to keep it still, or otherwise it'll melt things very quickly and can burn it too. So you'll see, I can sit here and just kind of get it to where it drips into that if I wanted to. Okay, all right. So I just wanna keep the heat on it a little bit as I'm working it, keep it away from my hands. So I put it on kind of mess kind of messy and thick so I can come back and then shape it down in a little bit. Make sure it cools a little. Okay, get some clay. You kind of have to. What I was going to say is you have to move pretty quick when you're working with it. <clears throat> I 
All right. And not, this piece is plastic, so I have to keep it away from that, otherwise I melt the plastic dash. I'm using that as part of my mold piece. I'm kind of heating up the area around the groove too so that you're not putting hot clay on a cold surface. Otherwise it won't really blend in and it delaminates a little. So I'm putting a lot of clay so I can build it up a little bit. So I'm sure it's gonna sag after I get everything heated. So it'd be better anyway, thicker surface. All right. You can probably see all that, how it kind of gets glossy all of a sudden. It means I'm melting the surface and it should bond really good. You have to do a lot of this with one hand a lot of times. You have to keep the heat on with the other gun. I mean with the other hand.
time. 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna let this uh, dry a little bit, and then I'll come back and do some shaving, sculpting, or whatever you wanna call it. All right, guys. Okay, I'm back, and the clay has uh, hardened a little bit, and uh, I think I can start to shape it down. It's still pretty warm, so I may not be able to get too far with it until it cools down just a little bit more. Uh, the cooler it is, the easier it is to work with, but um, it's kind of a happy medium spot there. Sometimes it works nicely to have it warm uh, if you need to take a lot of material away. But I also set the camera on manual focus. I noticed before it was freaking out with the autofocus stuff. Uh, so hopefully it won't do that this time and it'll stay focused at least on the workpiece. Okay, so I have this little tool, which is a paint scraper. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this works really good for, you know, taking material away quickly. And let me get my piece of cardboard down here so I can catch all the clay. And what I do is I just kind of use this to start removing clay quickly. And this does a good job because it, it just does it really smoothly. And then I can come back and, and contour it with one of these guys right here, one of these. So let me just remove some material. So this works for just up to trying to obtain that shape that you want. scraping the paint off the plastic part of the dash. I don't really care about that. This is all going to be smooth later in the process. The plastic piece has like that little fake leather texture so that's going to go that's going to go away when I get through. That air conditioner is really loud. I'm gonna have to turn it off on my next videos. So, I'm sorry if you hear this buzzing sound in the background. It was a lot quieter, but I guess uh, over time it just started to wear or something. Okay. So I've gotten a lot of the material away, so now I can start shaping with the other thing. Get this over here out of the camera. This is a really good tool for this uh, kind of work. A lot of people use like, I don't know, like these kind of things. Uh, like little tools like this. And these are decent. These are actual clay working tools. They're all different shapes and sizes and all that. Um, and they work okay, but the problem is is that this clay, it's, uh, it's really tough. <laughs> so you'll work it and then it'll just pull that part right off now these are cheap, but still, it, it kind of abuses these things pretty bad. All right. See that going on right there?
kind of bend this like that to get a nice contour shape. Okay, I had to step away for a second. My kiddos just got home. Um, all right, so, so yeah, so I'm just using this uh, thing here to contour a nice shape out of the clay. And then you have to kind of go back and fill in little scratches and pinholes later. I'll probably do a lot of that. I'll probably pull a mold of uh, this whole dash with all the little imperfections and then make a fiberglass copy of everything. And then use, since that fiberglass is so hard, then I can use some body filler and really work all the fine edges and shapes. Uh, and then I'll take another mold off of that piece. So it's kind of a long process and tedious, but I think in the long run it'll make for a nice piece when it comes out. All right. I use this little guy, this one, for this. Uh, these really hard to get to shapes. Use nice small strokes here. So that's why I built up a lot of clay on top of the piece so that I could, you know, shape it down and really work it without having to worry about breaking through or something like that. And this one I put a slight curve using my finger. So when I'm working a curvature piece, I'll take this and I kind of bend it with my finger. So I put my thumb in the middle. I don't even see that really, but Basically, just bend it like that, and that way I can get a nice shape out of it as I'm going. So this is kind of the do-it-yourself deal here because I'm using all these tools from Home Depot rather than actual clay working tools. Uh, you really save some money, I guess, doing it that way. But one thing I found with all the clay working stuff, the really you know big pieces that you needed are just so much money and they're so specialized and hard to get. I couldn't find any places that really had the things I wanted. So. I just happened to be walking down the aisle at my hardware store and saw these and they felt right. So kind of just started using tools from the hardware section and it's worked out pretty good. Like I said, once I take a mold of this, I'll end up uh, really 
reworking it with uh, body filler and <clears throat> fiberglass and stuff like that to make for a really nice piece. And then I'll take another mold of that piece. I don't know if you can see this one working off camera again. Looking pretty good. video super long. So what I'll do now is I'll let it sit for a day, kind of go through uh, nighttime temperatures and some daytime temperatures, make sure it doesn't freak out, <laughs> start cracking again. Shouldn't. Uh, should be pretty, pretty good. Now. There's a couple little spots I have to go back and kind of fill in. There's one there and right there, kind of like little pinhole things. Usually you can take a uh, piece of clay, warm it with your finger, and just really squish it in and then scrape it down. It usually works out pretty good, as long as you're careful. I have to work all these areas around the vent really well, but I probably have better luck doing this work around these things after I have a hard um, dash piece to work with. And I can use body filler and stuff like that. Still pretty warm. God, it's a hundred something degrees outside. <clears throat> All right. Where's that piece. Okay, I 
vents are starting to crack. <clears throat> okay, how's that look? All right, let me pop you off the tripod here. Uh, All right, so I have manual focus on, so now I need to turn it off. Auto focus. All right, so that is it. Nice and smooth, no more crack. Here's a little pinhole I was telling you about. Uh-oh, oh. that's my uh, toaster oven. It only, it only stays on for 90 minutes, so. Um, but yeah, all this is nice and smooth. There's, there's no crack along that edge. And it's looking good. All right, so. That's about it guys, and I just wanted to show you the whole process without any time lapse <laughs> and let you see just how long it takes to, to do a piece, like a little fix like that. And it's pretty quick, it's, that's the nice thing about this clay is it's, it allows you to really work quickly and whether that was a crack I was making or just laying clay down on a piece and then having to shave it, it's just a matter of building up the amount of clay that you need and then using, you know, all these tools right there and over here to try to uh, uh, shape and carve you know the piece and get the shape that you want so that's about it and hopefully it won't crack anymore seems like it's pretty good now and I'll just watch it for the next day or so and then I'll just keep working on the bottom piece down here I still have to do a lot of squaring up on these edges you can see it's wavy so I need to either square that up. I have it pretty thick, so uh, I did that on purpose so that I have a lot of material to work with. Um, anyway, that's about it. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Later.